So we've had Porsches in our family for decades. My dad's had a billion of them, I think. My very first memory and most fondest one was the day I put my key, the keys in the ignition and drove it out of my uncle's garage. And I drove it like an old, like a nana. I really did. I didn't know what to expect. It was covered in dust. So it was kind of like being a rebirthing for the car. But my uncle was really ill at the time. No. Unfortunately, it's um, yeah, he was going to die basically. Um, and he rang me up um, in hospital and said, "Look." Um, I'm wondering if you want my car. He said to me, he said, oh look, I just would like to see you get the car to go, someone who's an enthusiast. And four days, off, five days later, we were, we were in the car driving it home. So it was just meant to be. Um, he also said he didn't want his ex-wife getting his hands, her grubby hands on it because he knew it'd be just sold off a scrap metal or something. <laughs> this car, specifically, there were only 28 bought into Australia in 1978. It was delivered by Hamiltons in uh, Victoria. There's no power steering. There's basically nothing in the car. It's no electronics. It's a, it's a very basic car, apart from the fact that it's got a hell of a lot of horsepower. And you know, they have a history, and even now, the, the turbo pours these days, they're phenomenally quick. I hadn't, got, I hadn't heard of turbo lag. So you'd put foot down and it was slow, and all of a sudden the car would take off. I know that when I get in it, um, they are they are called the Widowmaker, and for the and probably because there are a lot of people bought these cars and didn't come home. A lot of these cars ended up around poles, ended up around trees, ended up in upside down. Um, so much horsepower, so light, so fast, uh, and, and the problem being that you know people just not used to that, and the technology wasn't in, isn't in the car for it to cope with the amount of horsepower, really. It's a 1978 Turbo. It's the first of the 3.3 litres. Uh, and to be honest, the, the car is, I think, even by today's standard, it's still you know, one of the greatest cars in the world. Um, I think its classic lines and its classic shape uh, still define what motoring is really about. These cars are notorious for having turbo lag um, in their lower gears. So you get first gear and you put your foot down and you think, oh, it's got to go soon or later. And all of a sudden that's when you get this almighty kick. And it, it really does throw you back in the seat. You get an absolute mega kick very, very quickly. If you're not, if you're not ready for it, it'll catch you by surprise and, you know, it's lights out. My son Elvis, he's uh, what, he's seven now, said, Dad, you're not, you're, not, you're not allowed to sell a car. He's got another 10 years before he gets his hands on the keys. He's fascinated by Porsches, like he, every time he sees a Porsche, I'm like, Dad, there's a Porsche, there's a Porsche. Yeah, so for Elvis, it's like, the car does have a personality, and he doesn't see it as being a million dollar car or a $40,000 or a 10,000 car. It's just a Porsche, it's his dad's Porsche. 
and He loves it. saying that you know he wants to, to make sure that we preserve the, the beauty and the, the perfection of the car. He's already, you know, he's saving up each week he gets his five dollars. He said, Daddy, I'll put some money away towards the car so we can get the interior done. It's brilliant. <laughs> so most likely the car's in the family forever. It really is the hallmark of, I think, what Porsche are trying to achieve. Um, I mean, it probably gets more looks today than it did, you know, 10 years ago. You know, you look at the car and you don't think, oh, gee, it looks old. What you see is a classic. You see a classic piece of German engineering. You see a piece of history that will never be repeated.